I was on a flight to a meeting a couple of years ago, and it was a flight out of Bloomington on a Sunday night, and I had preached four services that morning, and I'd missed my usual Sunday afternoon nap, so I was really looking forward to an in-flight nap. But just as the plane took off, the man next to me asked the question that always changes the direction of the conversation when a preacher is involved. He asked, what do you do? <laughs> so I said, I lead a branch of a nonprofit organization. <laughs> and then I went to sleep. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say because I knew the real answer had the potential to be awkward, but I told the truth that I'm a public speaker and a leadership trainer. <clears throat> Now, I told him I'm a preacher, and that's when he began to ask me some questions that I could tell had been on his mind for a long time. He began to interview me about how our church responds when biblical teachings conflict with people's personal views or personal behavior. So I told him, our church is committed to loving everyone and to welcoming everyone but that one of the ways the Bible teaches us to love people is to speak the truth in love to them, even if that truth is uncomfortable for them to hear. And we, when he asked me, well, how do people respond to that? I said, depends on the person. Some people do leave and look for a church that will affirm and teach what they prefer to hear. But some people stay with us and they wrestle sometimes for years with how they can come to terms with God's will and God's word. And then he asks, well, are you ever concerned that the crowd is going to dry up if you don't update your message? And though I knew at that point that I could say, well, our church includes several thousand people, I didn't talk about numbers. I said, you know, as long as we genuinely love everyone God puts in our path, no matter how that person is living, as long as we speak the truth in love to everyone, even if we know part of it will be uncomfortable, then we will leave the results up to God. And we will trust his spirit and his word to deal with people in the way that needs to occur. Now, friend, I'll tell you, that every thriving church that I'm aware of is actually fighting the good fight to help their people trust the whole Bible, even the parts that are out of step and out of style with our culture. And we intend to always be a church who does that. But I am not as concerned today about how our church views the Bible as I am about how you view the Bible. Friend, choose wisely what lens you use to read and to approach the Bible. Avoid the lens of legalism. Avoid the lens of liberalism. Take care not to add anything to God's word. Take care not to subtract anything from God's word. Fight the good fight to hold on to the one true faith as it is revealed in the scriptures.